He's still going. We're still on him. Oh, 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 no. Me and Rog just landed in Adelaide and now we're going to get picked up by the Marmalade boys. I think the plan is to maybe head to Lockley's Oval initially, have a bit of a warm up and then um, chill for a little bit because we're quite early but just got to find Rog in, in this sea of people but we're here in the city of churches. Rog. That flight, usually the uh, little one hour Adelaide flight goes by in the blink of an eye but with the excitement of the Div 12 Reds' biggest game of all time. That took an eternity for me. Yeah, it did. Visualising the game, you can only visualise yourself, visualize yourself kicking 10 for so long before it starts <laughs> to get old. You don't want to tie yourself out. Um, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a patient person when it comes to waiting, so I can wait when we're on the flight because we're doing something, we're going somewhere, yeah. we're on the move. Yeah. But I don't like sitting on the tarmac uh, for, I reckon, 25 minutes just waiting for other planes to go. Yeah, absolutely, that was painful, but... Uh, Alas, it's over. We're here now, and now things start to heat up a little bit. Thank you. What an honor. What an honor. I'm gonna bleed for this jumper. <laughs> I wouldn't kiss it, I've been wearing it all morning accidentally. Have you actually? Oh no. <laughs> it was on radio though, so. Oh, was it? Yeah, so you're all good, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing airport the high Filipino knees. Filipino dreamboat, is, he's come out of the dark, he's ready to go. He's doing airport high knees. <laughs> oh my god. This is unreal. Alright, we're here early before the game. Will, it's just starting to just sort of settle in what, yes. what's going to transpire. Well, we're starting to walk on the hallowed turf before the fans get here and it's... So it's about midday, so yeah. it doesn't kick off for seven hours. It's starting to get to me like how big this could actually be. This um, is going to be big. The car park's all sort of corded off, so I feel like there's going to be a fair turnout. There's more toilets, there's some, some food trucks, there's some signage. Oh, geez. I've never had this big of a turnout Any anything that I've done. Anything. <laughs> this is huge. So you blokes were on the radio this morning? Yeah. Yeah, Jara and Joel were promoting the game, um, getting it out. And like, it's so, it's so weird because they've had like three radio promos in three days. God, God only knows how many people that's going to bring in. Oh my God. Mitch Robinson, the coach. It's going to get silly later on. All right, the time has come. It's late in the afternoon and we've got to get down there. Trey, how are you feeling, mate? Uh, it's good, good. Better than you. <laughs> Better than you. I'm feeling well. I think I've cracked. Like, in this waiting period between going to get lunch and going down to the club, I've said you've that... Gone through, you've gone through six different emotions. Mate. I've started saying I don't want the footy. And now you're saying you do want the footy. I do want the footy now, but there was a period of time where I didn't want the footy. But that's okay. That's okay. You can have those emotions. Heading down to Lockley's Oval now. Let's go. That is a man and a half right there. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey, baby. Game day, baby. Phew. LFG! LFG! <laughs> Follow through, mate. Head over it. Guys, make sure to subscribe to Kate and McDonald on YouTube, the best day for YouTube. When we got to the ground and had a bit of a warm-up, it really dawned on us how many people were there um, and it was just so, so exciting. It's like there was, um, there was a buzz, there was a, there was a fever in the air. Um, Checkers and the boys got the first couple of clearances and it was hanging around the forward line. In the first minute, ball goes long to the top of the goal square. Great positioning by Luke Bruce C. McDonald. And I take an uncontested check, chest mark at the top of the goal square. The ground was giving way when you tried to change directions. Like if you tried to push off and sprint, you'd fall over. I fell over like two or three times at the first <laughs> quarter. I had like the whole crowd just laughing at me. So I didn't, I don't think I bodied this guy. Um, he was pushing a little bit deeper into the goal square and I was waiting for that centering ball. And when the ball did get centered, it was like perfectly placed. And this guy who tried to close me down slipped or sort of like stumbled on, um, on the ground. The ground gave way a little bit and that just gave me the amount of time where I could just take an easy chest mark. But I still felt like with the way the ball was positioned, I should have been able to protect the, the drop of the ball anyway. So um, 
I was pumped. The first minute, first minute and a half, I'm walking back top of the goal square to take the kick. And when I went back to the top of my mark, I'm like, oh, you're going to cop a little bit here, but just go back and, and kick the goal. And I, I didn't cop any heckling at all. The whole crowd wanted us to win. Like the whole turnout was like so, so excited to whip us ultimate Div 12 Resis home. Where everyone was like, come on, Kados, you got this, mate, you got this. I was like, oh, geez. Like people are really behind us. And that was that was a great feeling. It, it, it was even to a point where, you know, the opposition would run out and they'd get booed. <laughs> it was just so pro our team. It was, it was crazy. So I went back at the top of the mark, walked in, kicked it. I almost kicked it into the man of the mark. Now, this is another thing. Like, when you do goal kicking challenges and whatnot, there's no man on the mark. Like, you just kick the footy. So, I sort of forgot that, you know, he's going to try and he, – he's going to jump up and try and stop it. And he did. He was only, like, 10 or 15 centimetres off, nicking it with his finger. But I put it through. There was relief. I celebrated. But I wanted to keep a lid on it. I was aware that we were probably going to get pounded this day. So, I didn't want to celebrate to the crowd and go too crazy knowing that – in a quarter and a half, we're going to be down by 50 points. So I tried to keep a lid on it, and I was like, yes, nice snag, McDonald. I turn around, Roger's jumping on me, the boys are jumping on me, on me. But then when I saw Checker's face, Checker's runs over and grabs my head and, like, looks at me, and I was like, oh, far out, we're on now. Like, this is exciting. Half-time, Roger. Let's get all the small stuff, mate. Let's talk about that goal. How did that feel? First goal of the match, see McDonald. Oh. Setting a tone, wasn't it? Mate, the crowd, it was as if I'd have kicked a thousand. It was unreal. Robbo wants me to go deep and stay on the whole time. I've been rotating, so I'll be on the whole time. So hopefully, need contest and clearance. You're doing well, you boys are getting it out. But we've got to lock it in. I think I've only had the four touches. I reckon two only effective. So we need a big second half. And I'll be looking for you and I'll be looking for Sarah. I reckon we kick a couple of these. All right, let's go. Big second half. The boys up and about. The start of the third quarter, we all got told to push up give Shrey his space, one out. We got the clearance. We go long. I sprint back to – because I, I like I was, was going to try and get my hands on the ball and give it to the great man because he was free inside 50. But I sprint back to make sure he was right, make sure no one was going to tackle him. Um, the ball the ball goes long, bubbles out the back. Shrey's onto it first. I'm right there with him. And I'm shepherding. And I'm like, Shrey, you got time. You got time, Shrey. You're right, mate. You're right. Like I was trying to – Sort of let him know that you compose, take your time. He was right anyway. Um, he, he knew what to do in that moment. And then as I saw him walk in, I start celebrating with my hands out. Almost a little bit of uh, Dwayne Wade when he throws the ball up to LeBron. He starts celebrating before LeBron puts the ball into the net. Like I was I was convinced it was home. And I know Checkers was talking about the Lance Buddy Franklin, like people run on the ground when Trey kicks his first. But I didn't, like I, I knew that that moment could have happened, but I didn't expect it. So when Trey kicks the goal, I try to get to him first to like get around him. And before I get to him, the like sea of people close me out and I just get pushed out. And I was like, oh no. And then I was like, man, this is crazy. So I ran out of it. And then I went, oh, we probably should go in there and help Trey. And one of the most like inspirational bits of footage that I've seen is you see checkers just sprint straight in to go and get Trey because there was, pe there was kids falling over, there was people everywhere, there was people all over Trey. Initially, when they first jumped on him, it calmed down about 30 seconds later, and that's when you get the photo of him pointing up to the sky and he's covered in chalky milk. But yeah, I loved how Checkers goes in and just, just grabs his buddy. I think the next play, Will Taylor was in the ruck. Um, he, he gets a nice little follow-up clearance. He goes long. I My opponent was just in front of me, and then he tried to push back. So then I just I just shoved him. Like it wasn't it was it wasn't in the back, but it was like I just shoved him into the side. And I can never take overhead marks. I'm a chest mark man. Um, I gotta work on my me upper body down at body fit or something. Like I they, I can just never take them. Ball goes long. I've taken this this mark in my hands and then I've sort of like half bobbled it. Like it was almost easier than I thought it would. Like I've, I've pushed my opponent out, taken the mark, and then it was like, oh, geez, like that was easy. And as I, th as, I sort of, as I sort of stopped focusing on the mark, it bobbles out and he comes back and slaps it out my hands. And I'm like, that was a mark. So anyway, the ball gets slapped to the boundary. I sprint on over. Um, once again, I can't really bend down to pick the ball up. So I've got to slap the ball along the ground until it bounces up to me, which it finally does. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm going like Shea Bolt and Jordan Degoe, I'm just going to snap this over my head. Like I'm just having a crack at the goals. So I push off really hard and have a crack at having a snap. And at the last second, like I'm just about 
to launch this footy. This guy just like cuts across my periphery like this, trying to smother it. And I went, oh shit, like I, I've got to abort the mission here. So I sort of stop, turn around, and I've sold him for absolute candy. And the whole crowd behind us went, whoa. So I, I've sort of dummied this guy, sent him to the bleachers. I then cut in and I don't have a left foot. So my only option here is to chinata it. So then I just slap it on my boot and I reckon on watching the footage back, I reckon I had an opportunity to sell some more candy. So I reckon I could have gone snap kick, sell the candy, go to do the chinana, st stop, sell the candy. And I reckon that would have forged a little path where I would have had a meter or two to straighten up and finish. That's only on watching the tape back a million times. But I went the chinana and I, I was too... It, it went skinny. It sort of went, it almost looked like it was going to go over the post and I was going to try and like celebrate and whip it home. But it just faded like skinny side of the post. Um, if I had that time again, I reckon I would have balked that second block. And then potentially the moment of the night was um, Jared Davis's hanger. So once again, we get a free kick top of the 50. I really wanted that second goal. Um, so I sprint up and I was free in the pocket. I'm like, yes, yes, come on. Like, I'd love to nail one from here. The bloke goes long to Jared Davis in the goal square. And I thought, Jared's going to provide such a good contest. Like, it's almost a two-on-one. I'm a real chance to crumb this. So it's probably the hardest I sprinted in the whole game. I sprint back to try and be at Jared's feet. And as the ball comes in long, once again, what I was saying earlier in the game, like, in certain patches on the ground, if you tried to push off, the ground would give way and you'd slip. So this guy runs up at the footy, realizes it's going behind him, goes to go back and slips. He goes to the ground. And then as he goes to the ground, he tries to bounce back up straight away. And as he tries to bounce back up, Jarrah has no option but to jump on his head. Like the drop of the ball is on this guy's head as he's trying to like get back up off the ground. It was the perfect recipe for mark of the year. And Jarrah Davis just floats over this bloke and I was right there. I was right there front and center. And then he surfs him to the ground. And I thought to myself when I saw it, I don't think I've seen that on a footy field. Jared Davis had about 55 hydrolyte tablets throughout the day. He was so concerned about cramp. And he told us when he gets cramp, his body fully shuts down. So when he tries to get up from this hangar, he has this full body lock cramp from hip to toe. So I started sniffing around for another snag. <laughs> I'm like, I've kicked one goal one. If Jared Davis is incapacitated, I'm taking this from the top of the square. So the first few things I was saying to him was like, Jared, you're right, mate. You're right. Come on. You're right, mate. You're right. And then he went to get up and he went, ah, and his full body seized. And then that's when I started going, I'll take your kick, mate. <laughs> I, I fully embodied tip rat meal that day. Like I was just sniffing around for any sort of snag. Rog then wanders over and goes, what's, what's going on? And I go, oh, he's, you know, he's, got some cramp and Rog goes you're trying to take his kick aren't you and I said yeah <laughs> that made me laugh anyway Jarrah gets up and as he's walking in I just turned to the crowd and I'm like this is going in like he's just taken mark of the year there's no way he's gonna miss it so I just started celebrating to the crowd he wa he walks in he kicks it and um, the crowd goes nuts again we were covered in chalky milk um, yeah, just just crazy scenes. How'd you go today, Has? Oh mate, I loved it. Um, got, got the opportunity to host with my best mate Em. Um, I'm not I'm not trying to toot my own home, but I think we did. Toot it, toot it. Uh, I think we did pretty well. It was good. The crowd was all around. It, it was so much fun. Couldn't ask for anything better. No, you smashed it. How was it down on the other end when everyone was going crazy? It, no, it wasn't even today's goal. Jared kicked a goal. Like Did you see Jared? Yeah, I ran in. About 50 people behind me just come in and just shove me into the ground. And I'm with my microphone in the ground <laughs> and I've just eaten shit. That's commitment to the car. Oh, you come straight back up. You've done well, mate. Okay. We, we conquered. Dim Tom Bressies. We debuted. And the Blues have gotten up, son. And the Blues, are we talking like... Uh, I said to you during the week, McDonald's. I said to he you. He told me all week. I told you all week we're going to win, and I said to you, if we win, will you consider us a genuine threat? Six games in a row, blue, your, your, and four. The Blues are what 
everyone think Geelong are. Like the yeah. team that you don't want to beat in the second week of finals, and I yeah. think that's what the Blues are at the moment. Mate, and more importantly, Stray kicked a goal. <laughs> Stray kicked a goal. Jarra took the mark of the millennia. Oh, will he ever Jarrah, come down? Jarrah took the mark of the millennia. And he, I can't believe, it's so funny that he like, Took a hang on a bloke who was on his knees. He swear it was like playground stuff, but it all counts. It was the greatest mark I've ever seen. What Let's a go. day. And now we kick on and we celebrate this, the 10 goal loss. <laughs> yeah, no, you done well. Well done. Well done. Caden kicked a good goal. Oh, thanks, George. First goal. George was epic on the socials. I believe the bearding is still open for my jumper. So if you want to grab my jumper from Friday night, um, the link will be in the description down below. All the proceeds go back to the Lockleys Footy Club. Um, goes back to their juniors and everything that they do down there. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you to Lockley's, Marmalade, Checkers and the lads for having me, Rog, and some of the other ring-ins come down. Um, by far one of the best nights I've had on a footy field. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully my two touches contributed to some of the fun of the night. <laughs>